Welcome back everybody to the Health Sucks channel. Today we're gonna be wrapping up the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. I just wanna say uh, I thank you if you are watching these videos and I hope that they're helping. Um, anyway, let me stop talking your ears off and let's get into what we're trying to do here. Let's get to learn it, okay? Let's do it. Here we go. So what are we going to start with? So we talked about um, the organs that were important. We know the kidneys are important. We know the lungs are important. We know the liver is important. And we know that the hypothalamus or the posterior pituitary gland is very important when we talk about blood modulation. So for this graph, I want you guys to know we're starting in step one on the left side, and we're going to be wrapping our way around to the final two steps, which are going to be in the boxes. So for the first step, we got to have a problem, right? Your body has to start um, noticing changes in, within itself. So for example, if you're dehydrated, if you have uh, a sodium deficiency, or even if you have a hemorrhage, your body is going to be det detecting these changes via blood pressure changes or blood volume changes. Now, um, it's going to be very important that you know about this uh, uh, process called the macula densa. And the macula densa is important because it's basically got a tongue for sodium. The macula densa is like the dipstick of the kidneys where when, uh, when things are coming through it, through the afferent arterioles or through the efferent arterioles, the macula densa puts its little tongue in there, says, ooh, yeah, we don't have enough sodium. We need to talk to Renan. We need to get some more sodium. We need to increase blood volume. So how does it do that? It, it paces it, tests out the uh, sodium, says, hey, juxtaglomerular cells of the kidneys, we need you to do something. We need you to release some renin for us. So what's the kidneys do? The kidneys then say, okay, let's do it. Now, the kidneys release renin. Now, um, renin is then going to activate angiotensinogen in the liver. But the only way it can activate that is by the enzyme angiotensinogenase. So the ACE is to let you know that it's an enzyme, and that's going to activate angiotensinogen in the liver. So we know that if, you were to, if a teacher were to ask a question on where is angiotensinogen versus uh, angiotensin 1 and this stuff, they're going to ask you where they're created. And if they ask you where angiotensinogen is created or what organ creates it, it's the liver. But it is directed to be created by the kidney. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. Let's just keep moving on. Um, and we're just gonna follow these arrows and hopefully as I'm explaining it, it's making sense to you. Even if you don't know why exactly this is happening or um, the words that I'm saying don't might, may, maybe don't make sense to you, that's okay. Let's keep going. So angiotensinogen in the liver is then going to be converted to angiotensin one. But once it's converted to angiotensin one, we know we have to go to angiotensin two. But the only way we can do that is by utilizing these bad boys, <sighs> the lungs, because the lungs are important in creating angiotensin converting enzyme. So the ACE enzyme is going to take angiotensin one and then turn it to angiotensin two. So we know that angiotensin one to two is gonna happen where? In the lungs. All right, so what's the next step? After angiotensin two is created, this is the uh, determiner on what's going to happen. So basically you have two places that this can go. The first one is easy money. It's gonna be vasoconstriction of the arterioles. So what happens when we uh, constrict the arterioles? We increase the blood pressure by decreasing that diameter of the blood vessel, right? So then you're gonna have blood pressure increase until it returns to normal. Um, and your normal is dependent on what your blood pressure is. Or here's some normals for you guys here. Uh, but anyway, uh, the other thing that angiotensin is going to do is um, what we talked about earlier with ADH and the hypothalamus. It's going to go over here to ADH or, sorry, to the posterior pituitary gland and tell it to release ADH, which is what? Antidiuretic hormone. And we talked about that. We know that if it's antidiuretic, that means you don't want to pee. So then ADH is going to act on the absorption um, which this is the kidneys, it's gonna act on the kidneys to absorb H2O, to absorb sodium. And then of course we have um, activation of aldosterone from the adrenal gland, which sits right on top of the kidney, which we talked about. And then we know if it's secreting aldosterone, then something's gotta happen. We need to absorb that sodium, and then we're gonna have to secrete, because it's a kind of a negative feedback between sodium and potassium, we're gonna have to secrete the potassium and hydrogen ions into the urine so that we can further concentrate 
uh, the blood volume or increase blood volume until we get to that final product of normalizing blood pressure or blood volume. So I basically gave you the whole picture of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The only problem is when you don't understand the, physio the full physiology, when you don't understand you know, each cortex and what its responsibility is, then that's when you start to get confused and you start to um, basically mess up those, those easy questions on the test, those gimme questions when they're just asking you where certain substrates or certain things are gonna be created. Because as a clinician, it's important for you to know um, if someone's having complications or problems with this, because remember what we said about, you know, a diabetic patient, if they were uh, producing too much uh, glucose, or sorry, they weren't able to filtrate all their glucose because they had 300 deciliter of, or milligram per deciliter of uh, uh, sugar glucose in their bloodstream. So, you know, what we said, the 180 threshold, once it increases over that, you're going to have problems. That's called a pathology. So we first got to understand the normal before we can even start talking about the pathology, guys. So I hope that helped you just get a small understanding or even just a, a bigger understanding of all these organs as a whole. Because yeah, th they have specific steps in the RAS, but they also have um, you know, uh, other steps, other things that they're involved in, other systems that they're involved in. And hopefully I can get to that or I can get there with your guys' help. So what I'm gonna need from you guys is please, please, just keep challenging me to produce more content. And if you would, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video. And uh, and I do, 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 want to provide more content. So please, please, please let me know what you guys have. And let me know if you have anything else you would like me to cover. Because knowledge is power and health sucks. Let's talk about it, guys. Later. Later.